In this video I want to show you how you can create some kick drum with basically any type of synthesizer because in the end it always comes down to the three main ingredients which are some pitch envelope, a sine wave and some noise. I'm going to do it inside Ableton Live using their wavetable synth because it's particularly great for it but be known that this really works on any synth. My name is Janis, I make tutorials about music production and performance and let's just not waste any further time and just jump right into it. Just to give you one example in the beginning, this is the kind of kick drum sound we're going for. So it's some kind of simple kick, yet with a good amount of punch, but rather short, so there's not a lot of tone. And now we could kind of tweak it into any sort of direction, but I want to show you exactly how you can get to this stage. So first I programmed some MIDI clip with just quarter note bass drums, and you can see they are very low. And now with just the general sine wave, they sound maybe even too low, but you will see in a bit that it will actually sound less low as soon as we do a couple of modulations. But that's how you can start. And here you can see that I have the wavetable synth and right now it's only a sine wave. And the first thing we want to make sure is that we have a monophonic synthesizer because this way we make sure there's no overlap in kick drum sounds, which can sound really nasty. Although our kick drum is kind of short, so it wouldn't happen, but still this is a good thing to check in the beginning. And first of all, let's check the amplitude envelope and make it a little more tight because right now it's just some kind of wobbly contentless sound. So let's bring the sustain all the way down because we actually don't want sustain unless there are particular examples for kick drums where you maybe want to have this if you're working with tone. But for the simple kick, we don't want to have any sustain and the decay has to be very short. So we just play it until we just hear this boop. And if you're listening on laptop speakers or phone speakers, the sound might disappear fully because you can see like this, it doesn't cut through at all. It's anyway recommendable to use headphones for those tutorials. But also the first step in order to add at least a little bit of cutting through energy to the sound is by applying something called a pitch envelope. And many synthesizers give you this option already named as a pitch envelope, but others don't. So like for example with wavetable you have to use an envelope and apply it to the pitch, which you can do under the matrix and say, okay, for example, envelope two, we want to use in order to modulate the pitch. And what happens now is this. So you see, it actually sounds like a drum already, but we want to have the shortest possible attack and also bring this one down to zero because again, we don't want any sustain. We want it to end at the pitch we actually picked in the beginning. But now it doesn't sound as low as without this pitch envelope because it has this attack and actually cuts through. Also, some synthesizers only have one envelope, so you have to share the amplitude envelope for pitch and also the amplitude. But this is usually fine because as you can see, they are almost the same. But if you have independent envelopes, you can play around a little and see what happens if you maybe make one a little longer the amplitude envelope is longer, you have more tone and the pitch envelope is shorter. So you get a attack, but still kind of the longer tone from the amplitude. So this can also be very interesting to play with. And actually now I decided to increase the decay a tiny bit. So we get a little more of the bottom end because it was a bit too short, which can also be nice sometimes, but I like having a little more bass. And one more thing about the envelopes, it's also synthesizer specific, but if your synth gives you the option to play a bit with a slope, which is actually the this thing here, it's really cool because you can also impact the sound a lot because now it's this kind of exponential slope that means that it's a bit more punchy. But we can also turn it a bit to the upper side and you see you get way more tone. So it's kind of like increasing the decay, but you're just increasing the slope. And it has so much impact. And here it's again super short. So if you have some slope option, also it's really fun to play with this and it gives you a lot of chance to further shape the tone of your kick drum. So now it's time to add some noise because now we just have 
tone, but in order to make it cut through and also a little more punchy, we need some noise. And actually Wavetable might not even be the best synth for that because usually synthesizers have just a noise generator or you pick some noise waveform. And you also pick noise waveforms here, but it's a little more complex to actually make them sound like simple noise. But what I find really nice is the broken filter part and at like 49% I checked this before on my other example and still you have to do some tweaking because now it sounds weird and first thing to tackle this is to actually decrease the release because it's still on the first setting default setting here which is 600 milliseconds but still the noise sounds too bright and it's just some awkward sound and now we can bring in something that is called a filter envelope so it works like the pitch envelope but just for the filter because right now the filter is fully open and we can bring this down all the way to maybe even like 90 something now the sound is really muffled it sounds like the sound from some club somewhere in the distance or in the around the corner but if we now apply the same envelope that we have for the pitch to the filter frequency We get sound again and out of a sudden the noise is just some additional kind of punch that is really pleasant. And so maybe at your synth it's even easier to make the noise work. Maybe you can also just adjust the brightness of the noise but generally you can also try filter envelopes because they help you further shape the sound and also make the whole sound also with the kick drum sound from before a little tighter already. And this is basically the foundation for any kick drum and on any synthesizer you usually find those three parameters like noise, pitch envelope and a sine wave. But please hold on just for a second because we're not done yet. This is the foundation that means now it's time to add the character and just the things that you particularly like and more importantly what your synthesizer is able to do because you can check your synth now for what other things you can try in order to give more character to the sound and I want to give you some examples of what that could be again with the wavetable synth. And the first thing that comes to mind would be some of M synthesis so if your synth has this option just try it and here for example in wavetable you can select it and you can really get the sound super distorted and goofy if you increase this amount. which can be fun, I don't like it so much. I really think a little goes a long way here because if you just increase this amount to maybe like 2% or 3, just get a little bit of distortion, extra distortion without making it too obvious because there are other things that also add a little bit of drive and I think maybe you've seen some other of my sound design tutorials. I'm always some advocate for adding a little bit on uh, different parts rather than smashing like one effect or one modulation like all the way in. And this is a good example for it because at the synthesizer you can also add some filter drive and here you could also later just use some saturation plugin it really doesn't matter or some pedal or whatever you have. But here for example they have the different distortion programs and if you also use wavetable I figured out that for this type of simple kick I like the SMP mode the most because it drives in a way that still maintains the kind of kick character and doesn't add the kind of distortion that's, that quickly makes it sound a little goofy. And so right now I think nothing really changed. But if you increase the amount you just Add harmonic content and yes it gets louder but not only you just have more harmonic content and some subtle distortion that makes the sound cut through more and at this point it's also a good idea to bring in some effects already because I mean it's always good to get the best sound out of the synthesizer but still some EQ can maybe bring out the frequencies that you particularly like even more. Let's quickly do something with it. So for example some EQ here could look like this. I decided to boost a little just the bottom end because it could be boosted a little for my taste and if I do this I usually like to take down a little bit then after it. So here it's like 140 something just to clean it up a little and I feel like it just gains some extra punch and bottom 
without being too obvious because the sound is good. It's just about adding those little tweaks like at different parts as I mentioned. And the same counts for, for example, saturation that you just add a tiny bit. And for example, in Ableton you have the, the saturator. And here what I often do is just adding a little bit of soft sign without even increasing the drive. It just adds a little additional drive as it's supposed to be without being crazy with the effects. And the same counts for a compressor. Let's also use a compressor. And here you can see the settings. It's actually kind of a low ratio, slow attack, but also a slow release because for kick drums I like to add a compressor with a slower release because this way it makes the sound more compact because if you compare, this is how the sound was before and if I add the compressor, we get a little more punch and a little less of this low and room kind of undefined rumble which just makes the sound more punchy again and just it's like some overall glue to the sound. If you're interested in more sound design tutorials with Ableton Live or General, I highly suggest this playlist where you can find a lot of them. Also, you're warmly invited to let me know in the comments how this works for you or how you particularly like to design your kick drums. And apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.